Hebrews 13. Only got one scripture right now for you to stand to read. And Hebrews 13, just the first part. So you don't have to stand for very long. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about this uh, little series here. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13, 4a. The title of the message this morning is Honoring Marriage. Honoring Marriage. In Hebrews 13, 4a, just the first part, it says, Marriage should be honored by all. Everybody say, All. all. And the marriage bed kept pure. pure. You can be seated. Amen? That's it. That's it. I tell you, it's going to be simple. It's going to be painless, Eric. <laughs> Are you warning me? Should I stay or should I go? I said, you definitely need to stay. <laughs> you know, the Lord laid this upon Sharon's heart for me to do this. <laughs> uh, she went and, well, she had asked me, she said, I came across this and and I really think this will be good for our church. And it's, and there's a lot of people doing this. This it's it's actually scheduled for this month. And it's by focus on the family. And she ordered it, and you know, and uh, she gave it to me to read and to study. And I'm like, okay, I'll read and study it. <laughs> Wasn't feeling it at first, you know, but then as I began to read it, I'm like, wow, this is good. This You're is welcome. perfect for what we You're need uh, to do. So it really caught my attention. And it made me realize that we haven't honored marriages like we should. We have not honored marriages like we should. You know, we're going on a Thursday night here. We're actually assessing our ministry. And if you're not here on Thursday night, you really need to be here. Yeah. Because it's really, it, we're going to places and we're getting us out of the yeah. box thinking, <laughs> not normal thinking. You know, we're trying not to be the norm. We're, I don't want to be just like every other church, you know. know. Most of us here know how to do church. And, yeah. and we get into a rut. We get into a routine. And we get into a thing and then we do all the things. It's just like this morning that my wife almost blew, blew the men's brains by not giving them an envelope this morning. On the, where's the envelope? Where's the envelope? Uh, we don't have an envelope for the money. She did that on a reason, for a reason, because she said, they don't really need an envelope. So just stick the money on there. So kind of just, you know, so we're going to do things differently. Amen? Things are going to be different. We got to do things different. Why? Because if we continue to do the same thing, we're going to have the same result. We've been doing this for 16 years, and we have the same result. You know, I believe God wants more from us. So we're going to have to stretch ourselves, stretch our boundaries. I'm praying that every day, that, that prayer of Jabez, to enlarge our territory, to bless us, and that we would not cause pain. Amen? Because God has called us for a purpose. And that's for every area in life. And this is another area that I see that we have lacked in, and that's honoring God. Marriages, amongst other things that we're learning on Thursday nights that we're not even getting close to, but yet we're learning. It's becoming aware to us. You say, Pastor, if we didn't know about it, then we're not responsible. That's not true. The Bible says to study to show thyself approved. And everything that we've talked about is in the Word of God. Everything that we've talked about. The other thing that really caught my attention is that we have a lot of what I call half marriages. Mm -hmm. Only one spouse is here. Mm -hmm. And we're missing other spouses. I'm not here to point or anything, but, you know, that's not the way that God wants marriage to be. We're supposed to be a couple together, every single one. So, you know, we haven't been honoring marriages the way that we should. We haven't been encouraging the way that we should be. So hopefully after the next couple of weeks, we're going to learn some things. Amen? So how can we do that? Or how can you do that? First, we need to esteem your marriage or every marriage as highly valuable. Every marriage is valuable. Every marriage. You say, yeah, you don't know about my marriage. Every marriage to God is valuable. Yeah. 
Amen. Luke 12, 34 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Mm -hmm. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Amen. We all must esteem every marriage, thinking of it as a duet in need of backup singers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I told you it's going to involve everybody. Song of Solomon 1 and 4, the second part says, We rejoice. Everybody say, We, we, we rejoice we. and delight in you. We will. Everybody say, We will. We will. Love. We will praise your love more than wine. Amen. We will. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 27 17 says this. As iron sharpens iron, yeah. so one man sharpens another. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we praise you. We thank you for this lesson, this teaching, what you are about to bestow upon us, Father God. Let me give away what you have given unto me. Let them see what I have saw in this message, in this teaching, Father God. May we all catch hold and move to a new level, Father God, and honoring marriage, Father God, one to another, and, and being, uh, if we are married, to be in the husbands and the wives that we're called to be, and to be the backup singers, to back up marriages, and to help to esteem other marriages, Father God, and be at the encouragement that you've called us to be. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And amen. Most marriage sermons are spoken directly to marriage couples, and that's usually what you see when you do. So a lot of churches kind of tend to stay away from it because it can't affect everybody, just marriages. But today, you know, because they like covering topics like communication and intimacy and uh, the difference between men and women. So like I said, Eric, you're safe. It's like, should I stay or should I go? We're not going to talk about those things during this seminar, uh, during this uh, series of honoring marriage. We're not going to talk about all those things that Eric gets in trouble with a lot. So we're just going to leave it at that. This message today and, and next Sunday's me message is, is not about any of that. It may not be anything what you even expect it to be. This message seeks to equip every Christian, every believer to honor and bless uh, the couples in, in their families, their churches, neighborhoods, workplaces, communities, wherever it is. We're going to learn how to honor marriage. Amen? Whether you're married or not married, single, doesn't matter. We're going to learn how to do that. This marriage uh, sermon is for everyone. Amen. Why? Because I already said the scripture in, in Hebrews 13, 4. Let marriage be held in honor among all. All. Everybody is to honor marriage. Today I want to talk about esteeming your marriage. It's highly valuable. And then the next thing that I want to talk about is how to be uh, a thing, thinking of marriages as a duet that's in need of backup singers. And I want you to understand that if you're a believer, you're a backup singer. Right. Every one of us are backup singers. We are to help and to support each other. We're to what? And that's where that's good. We're to what? Encourage one another. That's all part of it. When we're encouraging, we're backing up one another. And if there's anything that needs backing up are marriages today. Yeah. Even in the church, 50% end in divorce. It is no different than the world. That's right. Sad. That's sad. Very sad. You would think, okay, only 30% of the church. No, it is no different. 50% even in church. People in ministry All the time. 
couples, Amen. pastors and their wives, and, all the time. Uh, praise and worship leaders, and all getting divorced in the church, 50%, mm -hmm. which is exactly the same as outside the church. That's scary. It is scary. And that's why God has called us all to be backup singers, mm -hmm. to encourage one another. Amen. And we're going to learn how to do that. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, every follower of Christ is called to esteem marriage to as a highly value, as highly value. In God's eyes, I want you to understand that marriage is esteemed high. God has a plan and a purpose for marriage and to him in God's eyes. That's why it says, let not man, what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. So, but next week, we're going to talk about the five ways to honor uh, marriages around you. We're going to go through five different steps. you got to come back next week to hear part two. So this is part two. Oh, you guys are smart. I, I, <laughs> wow. That's good. He's slick, he? yeah. So the very first thing that I want to talk about is esteem your marriage as highly valuable. Esteem your marriage as highly valuable. We've already read the verses like I said. Uh, Hebrews 13, 4 and 8. Marriage should be honored by all. It's very plain, very simple. Uh, very self-explanatory. And then the next one is Luke 12, 34. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And that's what I want to talk about right now. Because what that translates as, if that shows the condition of your heart when it comes to your marriage. Mm -hmm. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart will. What values you the most is what you're going to wrap your heart around. Amen. We may have our heart wrapped around our children. We may have our heart wrapped around our grandbabies, which we do. And of course, our dog. We love our dog and our heart wrapped around. So that's where our treasures are. And sometimes we lose focus on where our treasures really are. And, and marriage is one of them. Marriage is a should, should be a, a, a treasure in your life. Amen. Because what God has put together. Amen? Amen? So we need to esteem highly. Now, <clears throat> even though uh, Jesus wasn't talking about marriage at that moment, at, at the moment, but the principle still applies. Your life is an overflow of your heart. Whatever your heart is full is what you're going to speak, how you're going to act, how you're going to conduct, how you're going to talk to your spouse, how you're going to act towards one another. How, whatever in your heart is how you're going to conduct yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen? I'm, I'm here to tell you, some, it, it, it just, some, sometimes it's not good. Well, I love her, and if it changes, I'll let, I'll let her know later. You know, No, they need, if you really love her, you'll tell your wife. Or your husband. Amen? You got to speak it because that's what's in you. You got to speak what's in your heart. Amen? Amen? Now, when we invest time and energy into our marriages, means your heart is into it. Now, I remember some years ago, I did on, during this time of year, I did on the uh, 40 days, and I cannot remember, uh, uh, the 40 days of, uh, golly, what is the name of that? It was 40 days where we, it was a 40 day challenge for marriage. Fireproof. And, and there, there was a movie, uh, Fireproof. Fireproof, but there was a 40 day challenge. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, we the did the. Uh, love Dare. Uh, love Dare. Love Dare. Love Dare. Love Dare. Oh, see? Amen. And so it was a Love Dare 40 days. And we saw the movie uh, Fireproof. I think it was Fireproof, is one of the yes. names of the movie. Excellent movie. Excellent, excellent movie. If you know any couples or anything that's in trouble, that's an excellent movie to, to watch. They had both fallen out of love. They had both, you know, started and everything. But he got saved. When he got saved, he knew that he had, to, he had to make things right. He had to change everything. And so his dad had given him this 40-day love dare. And for each day, it, it guides you on to do something different 
every day. It's excellent. If you've never tried that, I did that with my wife. I actually did all 40 days. And it was so really neat in the book and in the movie. And he did this for 40 days. And, and she started noticing a difference, a change. And, and before you know it, it was over. Uh, and she began to fall back in love with him. And he was... Uh, on like day 60, she says, I thought this is only 40 days. And he says, I know. And I kept going. <laughs> so he ended up doing it the love all over again, that same thing. But it wasn't, he would not stop until he got his marriage back. He got that love back, that compassion, that intimacy, and all those things uh, back. So uh, anyhow, investing time and energy into your marriage and it does take time and energy. It's not. Easy. It's so easy, uh, guys, to come home from a long day's work, be out all day, working, 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 or ladies, to go home and say, you know what? I'm taking a bath, going to bed, eating some dinner, and I'm done. I don't want to talk to nobody, want to do nothing. It's so easy to do that. But we have to realize we have to give time and energy. Now, I know there's sometimes we're just slap dab wore out. It doesn't have to be, you know, it's just like with, with my dog. My dog knows. I, I think my, my dog has a built-in time. I'm telling you. He knows exactly a routine of everything. He knows he gets about 20 minutes of dad's time at night. He knows it. And when it's that time, 8 o'clock, I don't care if we're watching a movie, eating dinner, he's starting to whine. He wants his daddy time. And he's so excited. Rain or shine, doesn't matter. It, can, it was raining last night, he's ready to go out. He doesn't care. Dad, get the umbrella. Hold it over me more. <laughs> and we went out for a walk. He likes his walk. Because he knows that after he gets his walk, we walk around, and he gets his, I know exactly where he's going to smell. I know exactly where he's going to do all because I'm spending that time with him. And when we come in, he has to have a biscuit because I just went for a walk. I deserve a biscuit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I give him a biscuit, and he goes and lays down, and he's fine. Yeah. He's happy as a pig in slop. Uh -huh. He's just happy. Now, come 9 o'clock, he's looking at me with droopy eyes saying, Dad. Time to go to bed. Time to go to bed. I can only keep my eyes open. I only got 12 hours sleep today. I'm, 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 how are you doing that? I got to go to sleep. That's my dog. So, anyhow, he has to have his time. Well, the same thing with each other. We have, we take sometimes for granted one another. And, and we have, it takes time and energy. We have to invest in our marriage. If it's, if it's special to you, if it's valuable to you, you're going to invest time into it. That's right. Amen? Now, let me move on. God said to esteem our marriages. That word esteem means to honor, respect, and admire. Mm. Honor, respect, and admire. I always tell my wife how much I love her, how beautiful she is. Always. There's been times that we've gone through, and I'm just going to be honest, we've had times in our lives where things have not gone well. You get mad, I'll show her, I won't say nothing. <laughs> Come on, guys, we get babyish sometimes. Girls too. Yep. We want to pout and fold our little arms and, you know, and I'll show her, I won't well, kiss her, I won't tell her I love her, I won't do nothing. <laughs> And I found that all that does is make me more miserable, right. makes her more miserable, cold in the house. <laughs> you know, like the old country song said, too hot to fish, too hot to hunt, too hot to play golf, and too cold to play. <laughs> no <old> country song. <laughs> Just miserable. So I've learned that we've got to invest no matter what. It's not the a fact that she deserves it. It's, it has nothing to do with that. Well, she needs to do this for me before I do that. No, that's not how that works. 
That's not how that works. We're to invest into each other. Whether they invest back or not, we must do our part. We have to stand before God for our part. And I have finally realized, she, she got to stand before God too for her part. But I have to stand for God for my part. So whether I get it back in return or not, which I do, we get back and forth. Amen? Now, uh, you've heard the expression, home is where the heart is. Mm -hmm. When our heart is into our marriage, we esteem, honor, respect, admire each other as highly valuable. Mm -hmm. Valuable. Amen? How do we do that? Value your spouse by seeing him or her as personally autographed by God. Unique. Unique. You know, when I look around and I see it, it I, I like to, I, I'm one of those people that like to look at other people. Anybody else a people watcher? I like watching and you see different you know, men and women together, and you're like, they don't even look like they go together, you know, or, or this, or, well, that's, per you know, they look like they, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? And and so we have to understand, you know, the, the uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and, you know, we don't really understand, but God autographs, God puts his name on each and every one, and, and, and it's just amazing how two different people and how God put two different, totally different people together. When, when Sharon and I uh, first got together, we were totally opposites, very much totally opposites. I was the extrovert, she was the introvert. She just, I mean, very introvert. She just, behind the scenes, you know, wouldn't say a word. You would not see her up here on a Sunday morning. No way. Uh, she was the, uh, the manager of the family. I'm the worker of the family. I'm the one. I work, 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 work. And I just do it, do it, do it. She has to manage and make sure it's all done correctly. And, you know, if it wasn't for her, I'd be in the dark and I wouldn't have water. Uh, I wouldn't know where to pay, you know, pay rent and all that. If she died before me, somebody got to come show me how to work that computer. Shaley's got it. Oh, Shaley already. And that scares me because I know Shaley <laughs> is with money. So she did teach Shaley all the, all the past. I, I'm telling you, I wouldn't know. I would not know how to pay a bill online. I just don't do it. I, that's not what I, I don't mind working and making money. That's my job. And I go and I work hard and I pray. Here you go. You know, I give her the money and I always tell her, why do you have money and I know? <laughs> I work. That's because I hand her the money. <laughs> I, I ain't got no money. I give it all to her. You got everything you need, baby. You got everything I need, she says. <laughs> if not, she'll let me know, right? <laughs> Amen. So, honor your marriage by keeping your vows. That's another, the second thing. Keeping your vows. You know, it's amazing. I went online uh, yesterday. I, you know, so I'm not completely illiterate online and stuff, just some things I can't figure out. But I went online yesterday to pull up marriage vows, and I was shocked. Yeah, yes, you were. I was. I, it almost, even thinking about it now, it brought to tears. How they have changed. I couldn't even find real vows. They had lesbian vows, gay vows, traditional, non-traditional change this for this for the I'm like dear Lord and we wonder why marriages half marriages end in divorce or even today they're not even getting married anymore they're just sleeping together and staying yeah. in the same house yeah. why bother that's, that's where our society has gotten to so I can even pull up all the different the traditional where it says to you know, love, honor, and cherish, sickness, and in health. You know, they got, hey, if I don't like it, I'm out of here. That's right. That's the it's thing. crazy when a divorce is is, is cheaper than, than, than a marriage. You get a divorce for $99. Mm -hmm. Really? That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, but anyhow. So I, I was just sickened by that. The uh, third thing is God's heart is for permanence in marriage. 
God's heart is for permanence in marriage. Honor marriage by gifting your children with a mom and a dad who love and enjoy each other. When we're talking about being uh, examples, you know, as mom and dad, we're supposed, our children are only going to know what they see. If they see a mom and a dad that argues and fight, guess what kind of relationship they're, they're going to end up in? That's right. All they know is arguing and fighting and fussing mm -hmm. and carrying on, cussing and throwing and doing all that. I remember one time I had a lady that um, I talked to, and she says, well, it's okay to cuss when you're mad. Mm -hmm. It ain't never okay. Ever. Ever. I mean, how mad you get. It's never okay to cuss and, and call names and, and that and all, all of those things because uh, that's, that's not of God. And that's what their children are going to see. You know, I want, my, my grandmate maybe told me one of the, the best things she could ever tell me. She said, she wants a man like me. When she marries, she wants somebody like me. And I believe the one that she's dating is somebody a lot like me. Yes. Uh, very much into serving and, and uh, respect. And, you know, that's one thing. I took my granddaughter on a date one time. And I said, they don't, this is the only way they're to treat you, period. And I opened the door for her. I talked with her. I shared with her a little bit. She was, uh, I forget how old she was, about 15, 16. Took her out and took her to Red Lobster, you know. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to give, give, give her the, the, the daughter's father talking, though that's my grandbaby, but I'm the only father she knows. And, you know, because she's. You know, starting to get interested in boys. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus. Come on, Lord. Come now, Jesus. Um, and so I took her, and, and I'm going to talk to her and tell her how to be, you know, how a lady is to be treated and respected and all of that. And she ordered shrimp and pasta. And, and uh, so as we, we as I was trying to talk to her, she reached out and she grabbed the news and went, <laughs> and I said, well, you got to worry about that too much, Mark. You know what I mean? I said, yeah, well, I guess I'm good for a while. <laughs> I'm like, really? Okay, so you're not interested in boys right now because you wouldn't have done that. But anyhow, uh, <coughs> and to find that somebody just like eats just like her. I mean, they both like to eat and everything. They, they, they have nothing. But anyhow, so the second thing that I want to talk about is steaming every marriage. Think of it as a duet in need of great backup singers. Mm -hmm. We're all in need of backup singers. If you're married, every marriage needs backup singers. Every marriage. Mm -hmm. Every marriage. And next week, I'm really going to get into the five uh, things that I'm going to break down for you, including the singles, the children, uh, the older couples, younger couples, single couples, uh, divorced couples, a widowed couple that's going to cover all of those on how we as believers, if you're a believer, you're called to be a backup singer. You're called to be. Now, this takes us to the, you know, the real heart of the message of what, what I want to get across today. Every Christian should be equipped to function as a great backup singer. Again, Song of Solomon 1 4 says, We will rejoice. We, if I say we, we rejoice and delight in you. We will, if I say we will, we will praise or extol your love more than one. Like the couple, oh, first I want to read just a little bit of what it says here about the Song of Solomon. If you've never really understood, anybody ever read the Song of Solomon? Love it. Yeah. That's a very, love it. Uh, that's a love novel. That yes, is a is. beautiful yes, uh, thing. And it talks about everything, everything. in there. Yes, it does. Everything. everything. Everything you want to know is right there in Song of Solomon. It talk about everything. When it comes to love life and what you can and can't, everything. That's all I'm going to say. So we're not going to read that today. <laughs> the Song of Solomon is an eight chapter book in the Old Testament. The entire book has traditionally been understood as a duet by King Solomon and his wife, a Shulamite woman. 
or at least by a shepherd boy and his bride. Throughout the book, they sing their love lyrics back and forth to each other. Their song is a beautiful melody of love, romance, passion, and intimacy. The duet is enhanced by backup singers, who are sometimes referred to as the Daughters of Jerusalem, or just the chorus. The first time we hear them harmonizing from the background is in chapter 1, verse 4, when they sing, We will exalt and rejoice in you. We will extol your love more than why. From the moment the woman expresses attraction and desire for her man in chapter 1, to their conflict after the honeymoon, the backup singers rejoice in and praise the love of this couple. Their harmony reminds us to be advocates for marriage itself, mm -hmm. not just for the husband or wife. Every time the chorus sings, they are 100% for the success of the couple's marriage. Amen. Did you hear that? 100% yes. yes. for the couple's marriage. How refreshing is that? Yes. These backup singers know love when they see it, and they seek to build it up and not tear it down. Amen. Now, like the couple in the Song of Solomon, your marriage uh, is surrounded by backup singers, whether you realize it or not. You're surrounded by backup singers. Some encourage and bless your marriage. Others may lead you to doubt and lose hope. Mm. Bad backup singers... Uh, bring discord to your duet by saying things such as you should have never married him. <laughs> She'll, she's never going to change. You've tried everything and I think you should end the marriage. You deserve better than that. He doesn't appreciate you. That is bad backup singer. How many times have we heard some of these things? Mm -hmm. Even in our own relationships have we heard these things. That is what is called a bad backup singer. Now, the second one is good backup singers say things like we believe Jesus breathes life into dead people. And we believe he breathes life into dead marriages. Amen. Don't lose hope. Let's keep praying for your marriage miracle. Amen. Have you looked into marriage counseling? Do you know each other's love language? Mm, big one. I added that one in, by the way, because I am a strong believer in that. That's right. Why don't the two of you come over for dinner? Let's see what we can do to help you through that. We are all backup singers, whether we realize it or not. We're either blessing or cursing. Amen? And in doing nothing is still cursing. Mm -hmm. When we do nothing, we just kind of act like everything's alright, we don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. That's not how this works. Amen? We're all uh, called. We're, we're uh, Christians. God called us for a reason. God called us to be ministers of the gospel. And what's the gospel? The good news. Mm -hmm. What's the good news? You can have a great marriage. That's the good news. God, God made marriage, and God knows how to fix broken pieces. God knows how to fix broken marriages. God knows how to heal the intimacy. God knows how to heal. He knows how to do that. Why? Because he's all those things. That's right. He's the creator of all those things. He knows how to do it. He knows how to make marriage work. Amen? Amen. It's time to turn down or mute the backup singers who are trying, uh, who are taking your duet off key. It's time to turn them off. Stop listening to them. When you're going through something in your marriage, it's okay to talk. We need to talk sometimes. There's been times I've had to talk with Frank. Just, and Frank, he's a if great guy. I'm here to tell you, and I'm not trying to, well, I guess I am trying to expand your territory. Uh, my uh, uh, friend is very good at listening. And he does not take sides. He doesn't. And, I, and that's what I, I love about Frank. He doesn't. He listens. 
And he has many things. He's shared with me, you know, some things that he's had to deal with and things. And that, that's his calling. That's his gifting. He, you know, he should have been a, count, a, a counselor or something. But he's very good at listening. And ladies, you know, there's others in here that you can go to and talk to and share with that's not going to compromise them. Don't go to somebody that, that is going to agree with you. Right. That's the worst thing you can do is find somebody like you and go tell your junk to. Because when you do that, they're going to be doing that. Yeah, honey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honey. I, I, I know what you're saying. Uh huh. You, oh, no, he did. I'm just trying to tell you. <laughs> the finger go up and everything. He's sucking their teeth. I'm telling you that. Mm -mm, no, he didn't say, oh, and he's still breathing. Mm -mm. I'm just saying, that's not, that's not good. But we need good backup singers to support our marriages. Amen? Good backup singers. Now, we need to turn up the volume on those who know how to honor and bless your marriage. We need to find the right people that we can go to, that we know is going to speak life into us. Amen? Uh, Sharon and I, we've done quite a bit of marriage counseling. And I can't tell you, and, and, I, and I know Pastor Sammy and Nadine have well, uh, also, and there's nothing, and we can almost tell in about 10 minutes if, if their reasoning for being there is legit or not. 99% of the time, they're there for you to make their spouse listen to what they want. That's, that's true. 99%. Mm -hmm. Tell him what it says in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Or I love the men, how like, religious they get. The Bible says she has to honor and obey me. Tell her, Pastor. Tell her what the Bible says. I said, let's read the rest of it. <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's go to the beginning of it right here. Let's talk about how Christ said, you're to die for your wife. Come on, let's talk about, oh, we don't want to talk. I just want her to honor me and obey me. How many times we, and, and, and it'll be an argument. They're trying to get you to agree with it. And I tell them up front, I don't agree with none of you. If you're here, I don't agree with you. Because something's wrong. They don't want to hear it. And it's not just what it takes two. It always takes two. Always. It always takes two. There's, there's reason. There's things that have to change in both. You, the one may, may be more wrong than the other. But there's still things that need to be corrected in both. I've, all, I've never found where one person was totally innocent. I've never found. You, did you ever? It always. It may have started out. The one started doing it. And then the other said, well, forget it. You know, I'm just going to fight back. No. I have learned that it needs to both. It needs counseling. Both. No, it's both. <laughs> both. Amen? So, find, and, and again, in Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. So that's what we need to find people who can sharpen your marriage. Find those people that can sharpen your marriage. In conclusion, you are all backup singers. Every one of us are backup singers. We have to learn how to speak positively. Speak <coughs> blessings and not curses. Amen? Don't, don't blend in with, with what's going on. Find a way to speak life into that marriage. Amen? I know you want to put your two cents in. I know you got to come. Well, I know him too. I thought I could. No, don't say. If you can't say anything to bless, don't say anything. This is what you need to say. If you're one, one of those that likes to blend in and chime in and get all, yeah, let me take my him and you want to do your little finger and do your little head, uh, you need to say, uh, I'm not the one you need to talk to. You need to go find somebody else. Because I want to, I, I don't want, because I'm not the one. Amen? I'm just being honest. All right. Uh, we are all backup singers. Where you're single, a spouse, a parent, a uh, single parent, doesn't matter. Widow parent, doesn't matter. We are all backup singers. No matter what 
season of life you find yourself in, we all have a responsibility as believers to raise our voices and bless the marriages around us. We have a responsibility to encourage one another. Let your voice be one that uh, spouses and couples want to turn up and not turn out. Next week, I want to get into the five practical ways to honor, to be in that backup singer in each area for the marriages around you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I know a lot was said here this morning and a lot to soak in and a lot to think about. Father God, I pray that as we go through this week that this message would run over and over in our minds and our thoughts, Father God, helping us to be the right backup singers and uh, the right attitudes in our own marriages and things in spite of what's happening in them. Father God, you are more than able. You are a God that is more than able. Father God, you are more than able to breathe life back into dead marriages. You are more than able to bring back the spark, bring back the love, bring back the respect and the honor that we may esteem each other as highly, highly valuable. Father God, most of us have been through so much already and together so much. Father God, help us to strengthen our marriages. Help us to be the examples for those that one day we'll be married, that we may be the examples, Father God, that their marriages would also be regarded as highly esteemed and valued. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are. We just give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.